Hello everybody, Dr. Novak again. This is part two of how to make a plenum, but in this episode I'm going to talk about something that everybody brings up and I can understand it. A lot of people like to use sand instead of going out and buying expensive aquarium gravel at a aquarium store they run out and buy sand, play sand, like at a Menards or Home Depot. In fact, I kind of regret I didn't do that with this tank, set it up that way, because uh, somebody I know, I helped him out, and he had two 55-gallon tanks. One of them, he placed play sand at the very bottom of the tank, and the other one, he wanted to know how to place the play sand at the bottom of another tank. And because sand is so fine, I told him about a fabric, this ground cover fabric here. And I said, what you have to do is take this ground cover fabric. You can buy any one you want as long as it allows <clears throat> excuse me, oxygen and water to penetrate. And you just cut it out and put that on top of your plates that you have, your uh, um, under gravel plates. And you don't need expensive under gravel plates, of course. Uh, so since he had a 55, he made the plenum just the way I showed you in the first video. And he put the tubes, uplift tubes, one on the left side and one on the right side because a 55 gallon tank has two under gravel plates. And then we covered it with the fabric. Then he carefully put his sand down over the fabric so it wouldn't seep through. And that's all he had to do which just add the fabric. Now he had this real nice sand and I thought I'd bring that up because I was trying to keep the other video short but he did that and it really looked nice and I kind of regret right now that I did the first video by using the old substrate that I had from the aquarium and that substrate has to be well I'm going to guess over 20 years old and I just hate to get rid of it but I, you know, for three, four dollars, whatever, a bag of play sand. And a lot of people like to use that. Or a lot of people will use uh, sand that you get at uh, pool stores, you know, for their saltwater tanks. And this is one way of solving that problem, too, so the sand doesn't seep through. Okay, so anyhow, we set both these tanks up. I helped with one. The other one, he puts the sand at the bottom. He said, well, this is what the videos say to do, so he put it at the bottom. The other one, he did my way, okay? So... I remember that was in the summer, so by next summer we come and uh, we're looking at the plants and stuff. And uh, believe it or not, the plants didn't look as good as they did in the tank that didn't have the plenum. And I said, what's going on with, with this tank? Oh, you know, he wasn't sure. He's been doing the same thing. And I said, oh, this is the one that didn't have the plenum. So if you know anything about like a wrought iron stands, you can look right in the tank bottom. So we looked you know, with a flashlight, and uh, I did take some pictures and stuff, but you can see um, blackening of the substrate. You can even see where the roots to the plants were down there on the glass, and you can see black all over the place, even black covering the roots. Some of the roots were even black, and I said, this could be your problem. So we went to the other 55, which was right next to it, and that was using the plenum, we looked at the bottom, we saw roots actually migrating inside uh, the plenum a little bit. And I said, wow, how, how did this happen, you know? Anyhow, so just for fun, um, we start pulling some of the plants out in the other tank. And of course, you know, they were looking at anemic and, and things like that. And it wasn't nothing he was doing. Remember, he's treating both tanks the same, putting iron in, potassium. And uh, in his case, he was putting in some um, low levels of nitrogen because he, he didn't have a lot of fish in the tank at all, you know, like rummy nose. And it was they weren't producing a lot of waste. And both tanks uh, were set up in, in that way. And the other tank, we actually, when we pulled some of the plants out, the huge root system, you know, just a monstrous root system. And the roots has actually pulled out a lot of the sand and gravel connected up to it. So 
This was a little strange that that we saw this, how one tank acted with the gravel substrate on the bottom and the other one how it acted with the sand substrate with using the slow moving plenum. And the only thing we can contribute to is that the plenum, even though the sand is very tight and has a tight matrix to it, right, it was able to still let water seep through very slowly. And he said, yeah, he tried that from, uh, from the uh, uh, YouTube channels that would say dirt aquariums. But he doesn't see many of those channels anymore, you know, with updates on their dirt aquariums. And uh, I said, well, why don't, why don't you try it with a dirt aquarium? Just make something small and do the same thing. So we actually tried it by using the ground cover and he put dirt in it. And believe it or not, it did well. Now, I'm just telling you, it was a small tank. Remember, dirt has a lot of nutrients in it. And it was a small tank. He had the same kind of slow-moving planta this time using dirt only in a small tank. It was like a 20-gallon tank. It was just an experiment. He said, you know what? I'm going to use this tank. It's an old tank. I'm going to use it. In, fa in fact, it was such an old tank. It was a Metaframe tank, <laughs> you know, with the metal on the sides. And he said, I'm going to set this up with the dirt tank. Yeah, if it goes bad, he said, big deal. I'll just toss it out. So we put a, you know, cheap under gravel filter with the blue plates and everything uh, on that one, he made the same thing, put the ground cover. This time he filled it full of dirt. And uh, believe it or not, I was a little shocked. He did have a few little problems, you know, not a lot, but uh, the plants grew quite well, probably because I had plenty of nutrients from the uh, dirt he was using. And uh, so I know some people are against against plenums or I see stuff on YouTube and, and this person says they don't use, they don't work or whatever, but it worked with what I've used it for and it also worked if you want to use sand because in the, especially play sand, you know, uh, because in the tank that did not have the play sand, within a year you could see it turning black on the bottom of the aquarium where the other one no uh, the sand still kept fresh so the water must have been moving through it but extremely slow and the plants didn't mind that little bit of movement almost like a like you would say a convection movement you know where it's where it's from heat to cold moving very slowly that way well moving the water through the substrate so for those of you and I wish I would have done it and I kind of regret I didn't just go buy a bag of sand and make this aquarium with, uh, with the sand. But the only thing you have to do different is just buy a ground cover and put it on top of it. Uh, I hope that helps for those people who had a question because I do realize a bag of play sand is a lot cheaper than some of this gravel or some of these special... Uh, uh, substrates you're using for plants. I understand some of these bags uh, cost 20 bucks, 30 bucks, $40 a bag. And people say, hey, I can go out buy play sand for five bucks a bag for a 30 pound, 40 pound bag of play sand. And I can, I really, I can really understand where they're coming from uh, because it is expensive and this is the route people are going. So I just thought I would bring it up that you can use the same idea using other substrates that are a lot finer just rethink the way you're going to set it up you can't set it up though with uh, window screening that doesn't work the window screening it's small but uh, what happens is the sand can still get through it where the ground cover fabric for landscaping seems to be the best and they actually use this ground cover fabric to make uh, uh, pots for plants uh, for your ponds so, you know, in, instead of having the mesh basket that's hard plastic, they have these mesh baskets and you kind of open them up and you put the dirt in there with your water lily or whatever. And they're made out of the same material. And that's where I got actually the idea from that, well, you could just cut this material. It's very easy to work with and just put it on the bottom. Now you're not going to have anything migrate into your plenum. And it seems to work because it lets everything come through 
that mesh like the water that's basically what you want you just want the water to come through with the nutrients and nothing else and believe it or not it works so uh, don't want to make this a long one but until next time this is dr novak